da 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 Justin Thoreau. Oh. He looks a little like James Bond. He could pull that off. He's like a cool, slick dude. He has a really cool fashion sense. He mm-hmm. just has a, he's just cool. He, he is uh, unintentionally enigmatic. Like he's just been around all these great things, but he doesn't, he's not at every premiere, you know, or anything. He just keeps no. kind of a low profile. Low thirst level. He's not out there. He has cool friends. I think when I was out there about two summers ago, we went for a walk in Washington Park to see everyone on drugs in the summer. And uh, I think Gigi Hadid had a birthday party that night he was going to. He's like, oh, um, you wouldn't want to go, but there's this big birthday party. I go, yeah, that would be horrible. I think I'll just go to Chili's with my friends. Did you go? Mm -mm. Hmm. Dana, I don't jump when you say frog. You understand? I'm very unpredictable. Well, Gigi Hadid called me. So oh, what's up with space? Why were you there? No, I don't go anywhere. I'm a shut in. You know that. Anyway, I cornered <laughs> my hair for no reason and I didn't go. I just went to uh, Outback. But Justin. Justin Thoreau, Ben Stiller told me, because we're friends, that um, he's kind of the man behind the scenes that's influenced a lot of comedy in the last 25 years. And especially Tropic Thunder, which to me is uh, probably the most brilliant. Along with Hangover and and Will Ferrell, um, Anchorman, those are the me the three temples so of the last of twenty time, years, yeah. and since the knots into the, the teens. teens, those are the ones. So we break down Tropic Thunder and talk about how it's problematic in twenty twenty three and whether it should be or not, and Mel Brooks and movies, and that's. Was really I wanted to ask about you know I met him. We didn't talk about this. I think I met him at Jennifer's when we were watching. We'd watch The Bachelor and do goofy stuff like that. But I think he was there and I think they were just about to get married and I wanted to take him off guard at the beginning and go, okay, here we go. Justin Thoreau, first question. What are your thoughts on Jennifer Aniston? You have one hour. <laughs> what a great beginning to make him go, wait, this isn't going to be about that. Uh, but he did get pop brats. That's a hassle. We didn't even get into all that. So that's just my thoughts on it. Mm. It's always hard to be in a situation like that. And then they're always up Jennifer's ass and uh, she's very good about it, but man, she gets hounded out there. Well, the line in the sand for me is like, say you go out and you're a celebrity and maybe it's at the restaurant, th- this and there, yeah. but at your house, they're outside the gate yeah. or wherever it is, 24 seven. Wherever you go, they That just is follow. a gilded cage. That's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, I fought through them to get, get over to your place today. I dream about having it. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, this is Justin. Justin. He's at White House Plumbers. White House Plumbers with Woody Harrelson. We talk about their friendship and that that movie and him playing mm-hmm. G. Gordon Liddy. Um, that's out now. Well, here he is, Justin, and you'll get to know him. I just choked and almost died. <laughs> Nobody cares. No one rushed me to save me. These fucking people. You're, you're off the charts with energy today. I am? Yeah. That's because I had chia pudding. <laughs> Popeye. And and some uh, I, biking it. You know, my first stand-up bit was Popeye getting kicked in the gro- groin. Oh. <laughs> That's Popeye getting kicked in the nuts. Oh. Did you say uh, groin or nuts? Groin. No, in the crotch, I think. This is at me in college. Here's my, um, oh. I'll, do a, I'll do one of mine. Here's my first joke. Uh, I got a new car. Well, it's not really new. It's an old UPS truck. I got it so I can park wherever I want. Got That's so you could what, everyone? Park wherever I want to. Because UPS trucks used to just park oh, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like Amazon now. I can't walk you through all of them, guys. That was a 10 out of 10. That is not in your current set, is it? No, it might come back. I just wanted to. Best of. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest today, you yes. are. Uh, He's a real. Let me tell you something. First of all, Dana, to get, get off on the right foot. Uh, this is this is not some sort of puff piece like Smartless. Oh yeah, your precious, precious. This guy's going on about once a week and just tear me to shreds. And it and I, was, <laughs> I saw Jason Bateman uh, a couple nights ago, and I said it's a really terrible feeling because you can't. I can't punch back. At, you know, like there's no. I can't. They're they're on the air. They got the fucking bandwidth. You know, they got the three against one. Jason, Jason wasn't even at dinner. I don't know what happened. Hey, I was there very early. I could have gone. Hey, come on, you guys. <laughs> I just that was a horrible Sean Hayes. No, they're they're very nice. They're great. 
Justin, remember when I was on? Remember, I'm sure you watched it a hundred times. Uh, he said, I saw a spade. And then he, he doesn't say where he goes. We were at both at a seafood restaurant. <laughs> and he talks about it. And I go, do you mean koi? And <laughs> yeah. he goes, yeah. And I go, isn't that a sushi? Who the fuck calls it a seafood restaurant? It's anyway, one of my favorite. Laugh. I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> I'd have to sort of in the bed now whenever people are like, what should we get? I'm like, let's go get seafood, Japanese seafood. <laughs> 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 it's hard to you got to identify what the restaurant is. So how how uh, what's up today, man? What you, how are you? <laughs> I'm yeah. good. I'm in New York City. I speak of Sean Hayes. Just saw his play the other night, um, which was fabulous. Good night, Oscar. It's so good. I'm plugging him now. Who's oh, in it? it? A Who's in Good Night, started. Oscar? What's the what's the what's the storyline? It's a it's a oh god. Uh, it's about uh, Oscar Levant, uh, a sort of famous pianist, humorist, mm -hmm. and, right. and, and raconteur. Um, and it sort of takes place uh, uh, um, on the evening that he has to appear on a mm -hmm. Jack Parr show. The best play on I ever Jack saw. Jack Parr show? Mm. I don't, I'm not a theaterite, but I, mm -hmm. my wife, I, I mentioned her twice now, fall in love with the theater in recent times now that we're old. But we saw The Freeman in London and it blew, blew my mind. As a play. You know, theater is one of those things that's, there's nothing better when you see a good play. And there's also nothing worse than when you're watching a bad one. And so it <laughs> always true. makes you feel like, there, you know, there's, you're mm -hmm. spinning a, a, a gun with, you know, two bullets in the chamber. You know, you think, oh God. Now, when you, when you go, when you go last night or whenever to see Sean and you know ahead, it's probably going to be horrible. Do you do any prep work? No, I, I, no, I, I, we, well, it was a big group going, you know, like the smart list guys all went, obviously it was an opening night. It was a big fanfare. Um, and the, you know, it was like a real who's who of, um, of people and of funny people too. I did see that. I just saw you on that and I was looking and, um, I know that smartless has a, they, Dana, they redid a Hummer and they put smartless all over it and they drive that around <laughs> the country. So to let them know, they go, it's the three guys and they pop out like the, uh, tank out of the top you know they are the cool the cool kids and if it was high school <laughs> if life is high school they are definitely the cool kids at chimney corners they're yeah. great though they're all they're, like whatever that chemistry is is very funny you, which i would also argue you guys have as well um on your podcast they're very Thank very likable um and smart i just watched justin in um the watergate uh show it's called what justin i'm it's gonna be the white house at this. white house plumbers yep close enough and he's on that and it's going to be on what hbo may 1st we're just getting right to the plug no i'm just gonna say this because i just saw it and you look a lot like the guy in it um that plays g gordon Liddy. and uh i watched one last night and i started one this morning so i got a feel i don't know where it goes but i would say it looked like a a lot of fun b it looks super fucking cool it looks shot cool and who is the director on that is it Dave Mandel? Dave Mandel from Leap a Fame. SNL writer. Yeah. yeah. Old SNL that writer. That Dave Mandel? Yeah. That Dave Mandel. Dave Mandel from Veep? Yeah. And yeah. SNL? Holy did you, shit, Did Dave, you, you spot the, the, the cameo within the first two minutes of uh, White House Plumbers? Mm -hmm. Is that, was he come into your office? Or Woody's office? He comes he into comes the into office. He comes into Woody's office, yeah. Which is P.S. <laughs> Jim Downey is who we're talking about. He does a, a, a he was sweet enough to come in and do a, a cameo. And, um, and we all got to bend his ear about early SNL days. Oh, he is the greatest talker ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so much fun. You could just sit there and listen to him. You know, I mean, I'm sure to you guys, he was sort of, I guess, more intimidating. But, um, you know, when some, you know, that the thing when someone's, I guess, kind of your, was he your boss or no? I mean, he's a writer. Yeah, yeah. No, he was head writer when I first got there. And, that's our uh, boss. Oh, and that's not really Dana's boss. That's my boss. Wasn't, but... Uh, I was, I was more, I was scared of Lauren in a way, like most people are. Jim was pretty, he was, he was pretty approachable, but I'd be mm -hmm. more nervous around him now. But yeah, he, when he came on our podcast, he called me the day before and I was driving. We talked for an hour and a half and I said, you've just done the podcast. Now we have to do it tomorrow <laughs> because he, no one can talk like him. But um, yeah, I just wanted to overall, it's just I researching you. You're you're like you you're you kind of do everything. You're very mm -hmm. uh, light on your feet. You do a lot of voices. You do a lot of characters. You do a lot of comedy. You do a lot of drama. Uh, 
I don't. Even, I just want you to comment on that. I don't want to go like, was this your career plan? <laughs> but you do do a lot of stuff, Jason. I do, you a, do lot a lot of stuff. Sort of tripping upstairs. I get. I mean, obviously lucky uh, uh, to a large extent, but I. I kind of. I don't know. I, I I owe a lot of it to sort of just having a short attention span, and that I can't. When I do one thing for too long, I get kind of bored, and I think, oh, I, I don't want to do that again, or I don't want to do this again. Um, and then I just sort of. And I'm, I guess, patient enough that I can, I, I can go without doing something if I don't, if there's nothing I really that's perking my interest, you know. Um, so I'm not one of those people that feels like, oh, I, I have to be working all the time uh, just to be doing something. So I'll, I'll go for stretches without work, but you know, sometimes cooking something up in the lab, so, you know, writing something, or, um, um, or I'll do, you know, just sort of an animated thing, or I don't know. It's weird. I, I, I it's not. It's been a very bizarre kind of like, you know, I guess career, but it, it sort of just, it's sort of has. Well, it's a, it's a little it's bit, a if, the, if the word gets out kind of like, what can't he do? Well, could he write our script? Yeah. Could he direct? Sure. Will he produce? Maybe. Can he mm -hmm. play an Irishman with a good accent? Can he, <laughs> it's debatable. you know, can he write Tropic Thunder and then write, you know, being a uh, Mulholland Drive or whatever that uh, David Lynch film? So it is like it's hard to pin you down. It's great not to be pinned down. I, I think, think it's the best. I mean, kind I consider it ever a virtue, and it 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 leads to some more interesting choices sometimes to to kind of um, not be able to be typecast in certain or just seen in certain ways, you know, in certain lights. I guess that's a gift though, because there's very like, even in the comedy world, some people go, Oh, why didn't you do that comedy movie? I go, first of all, if they want a comedian, they start with these top five, no matter if they're right for the script or not, they just go out to them. And then after that, if they want this kind of comedy, they go to me. If they want this 2% different from that kind, they go, cause people go, Oh, you should do stuff like Sandler, but that's a gift. You're doing a lot of different things and that's not always up to the actor. Yeah. I mean, it's gotten better. I mean, as we all know, like, you know, when you first start out, you're, mm. you'll take anything, you know, it's like, you just need to, you need to be seeing how things are made. And, you know, so I started out, I mean, I did like, I was an extra on like maybe the worst soap opera in New York's history, you know, like, and a lot of people do it, you know, you get you, you do extra work. No, it was a half hour soap called um, <laughs> Loving. Good call. Um, I remember um, Loving. Do you? It was Fuck, kind of like was, a, a younger 10, soap. Dude. It wasn't like, you know, sort of <laughs> older. See. But it was, um, and I was an extra on it. And then they gave me, I played a drug dealer and they gave me a couple lines. Um, but it was really, you know, that was more just, and it's also, I mean, hilarious because, you know, those soaps are usually written by, you know, guys who are much older and you know they're trying to write like cool drug lingo so i had like lines mm -hmm. that were like um you know like oh well, let's get let's give him this stuff and he'll get a really good buzz <laughs> on you know like you got the scratch and the lettuce from my and a, you know a kite you know that, whatever so it's like no drug dealer in the world like that. it was funny i was actually doing it with this other actor i learned a big lesson um we thought oh this is so terrible so let's kind of send it up and make it fun you know like let's just mm -hmm. so that oh, when we boy. watch it you know a week later when it airs you know we can all have a giggle and so we sort of did it sort of bad you know like like hey this stuff's gonna get you higher than a kite <laughs> like this stuff's really good you know blah, blah 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 then we went and we watched it like a week later and we were mortified because the writing didn't look bad <laughs> like the other actors didn't look bad we looked fucking terrible and it was because we weren't understanding the medium of it it's like if you if you're gonna try and be funny do it in the medium that you're supposed to be funny in not on a daytime soap opera you know what i mean it's i just like, thought that no one's gonna the, think that it's a sketch show you know so yeah. you never know what they're gonna like though sometimes like oh you guys are awesome or get out were you ever fired summarily from a show I like, luckily get out. have not been fired. <laughs> <laughs> just immediately just showing up. How many up. times have you been fired is the real question. I've never been fired. I've been fired, you know, really fired. In Dana's full always up. getting fired. I, what does that look like? There's a lot of firings uh, going on. At least well, I was surprised days. they let me get in the costume and go in the fake helicopter with James Ferentino. And then they said, hey, come down here and 100 crew. And this is in the 80s. And they said, yeah, we're going to let you go. So I had to walk in front of everyone. No. Like the old TV show, Branded. Shame. Shame. Oh, Shame. My God. Throw I've been poop. on shows that where, was... or things that people have been fired off of. And it's always kind of like to to call them afterwards. And be like, hey, that was fucking not cool, man. 
That was fucked up. You, know, you, <laughs> you always, always have, have to take their, their side. Yeah, you go, what the fuck was that? It was nuts. Even though you were the one lobbying to get them off. <laughs> Even though you were horrible. <laughs> you <laughs> fucking Well, God James damn. Farentino was high as a kite, literally coked up in straight vodka. We were up in the fake chopper, and he had a smile when they started approaching the chopper. So I kind of felt like, I think Jimmy kind of said, I think the kids got to go. But I Aww. suck. I sucked, and I was so happy to get out of there. I did it to make money, and that's never a good reason. It's always Are you the getting, worst decision when you think like this yeah. is smart for my career or this will be good money like it's every time i've done that i'd make a terrible i usually rue the can day. you share when you might have nope. done that <laughs> <laughs> no i mean it's um because okay. yeah, you don't want to appear ungrateful you know because you're also oh, yeah, happy yeah i got for, you um you know you're also happy to be working sometimes you know um but it usually doesn't pan out if i, I have learned that lesson which is you know, it has to have some, I have to be wanting to lean into it creatively, you know, um, and find it enjoyable. It seems like if you, uh, have you been through a period or is, is this sort of so-called the most offers you're getting right now? Or was there periods hotter? It seems like you just have this very even trajectory. I just kind of have, I just kind of bump along, you know, like I don't, uh, it's, I don't, th in a good way, I don't think I've ever had that like, overnight anything you know like there's there's no been like there's no mo moment where i've ever been like hotter than ever it's just kind of like i've just been mm -hmm. sort of slow and steady trying to win the race you know i've been yeah, obviously <laughs> a lot of friends of mine and you know have had that thing where all of a sudden hollywood's wand taps them on the head and the next day they're fucking everywhere and you think holy shit yeah. and i can't even i, I don't think my <laughs> my nervous system would be able to handle that kind of a thing you know what I mean? I see you have a trophy. Look at Danny. He's got a trophy behind him. Uh, what do you think that's for? What? I boxing? don't see what. Yeah. That's boxing? I can't see. Cheerleading. Is... <laughs> oh, cheerleading. Pretty close, David. I'm not. I'm. Oh, last place. Last place. No way. I won't say you're a hoarder, but you have a lot of stuff going it's on. Just in, my, it's in my office. If I, if <laughs> oh I yeah. flip the camera around, it wouldn't look this terrible. If my, I'm a complete mess. I'm just at a room somewhere that's nice and tidy. Can I ask you just for a second? Because one thing is about your physicality. Like you can really Hot. look good. Good. You and David have that in common. You can mm -hmm. look good with your shirt off. Mm -hmm. um, and then I heard you were a break dancer, and my son was a break dancer. So he had a few questions for you. So when you were. 10 how many years did you do it like a couple years or um i did it i was really young and i did it um i really loved uh hip-hop and i really loved break mm -hmm. dancing and i did it i want to say for i mean you never stop really do you mm -hmm. um but um uh, no. i was it's probably hardcore into it for like two or three years maybe oh, okay, okay. Yeah. i have such an appreciation for it i mean it really is floor gymnastics power moves it teaches you how to use your whole body it's it's uh he asked what you did you do uh were you more of a top rock or footwork guy i was um i i was a pretty decent popper so sort of um <laughs> popping and locking and then um mm -hmm. and then i was good at floor work you know i was uh, you know, I could definitely well, that's back, big. backspin, that's handspin, the... head spins a little, and then I could windmill. Ooh. I tried to, I attempted a windmill uh, like a year ago, and boy, did that not go well. It's, and you know, even to just do a little floor work is really exhausting. What's a, what's a did, freeze? What was your best a freeze? Yeah. Oh, what's I could do a freeze, freeze up, you know, <laughs> on, you know, sort of up on my, you know, with legs up, you know, sort of. Legs up and you hold it. Yeah. Is that what it is? You spin and stop. It's hard to describe break dancing on a, on a podcast. Yeah. No, I would, I would I, freeze in a position Our where my, sort of, my cheek really... was on the floor. My arms were sort of up like this. And then my legs yeah. you know, sort of bent. You're just holding a pose on the floor that takes a lot of, a lot of strength. And did you have a crew name? You yeah. To Sergeant know. Pop and the Bionic Breakers. Jesus. Sergeant Pop, Sergeant and, Pop the and the Bionic Breakers. Bionic Breakers. I think I, like I read that. for that. Okay. I thought that was that's a sitcom. A, that's <laughs> all I got. But I do think that physicality physicality stays with you. You know, I mean, I was a runner in high school, distance runner, and I still like to get that feeling of uh, working really hard cardiovascularly. So it's, have you it tried you well, sprinting recently? Because that's hard. Recently, no. um, I still could make a case. I don't know if they do it with CGI, but I would say Tom Cruise sprinting in Mission Impossible in his mid 50s that's a lot of good take stuff going after on. Take. If that's real, his hip flexors, a lot of stuff has to be working to sprint after 50. I had this sort of delusional and still kind of do, although I'm snapping out of it a little bit. This sort of delusional when I'd watch like sports 
like like the Olympics, for example, like someone on like mm. those rings. What, what are they called? The uh, you know, or yeah. or the pop the horse. horse. Uh, the, I would sort of always yeah. watch and go like, I could do that. I mean, it, like yeah. if I was like set up in an ideal situation, training camp, diet, all the rest of it, I could do that. <laughs> and then you know, like or or like swimming, I'd be like, I could do that. You know, I mean, or football or baseball you know i just i had this like in my head like i know that i bet i could do that you know i did gymnastics in high school and i did the horse i did the rings and i really did the i didn't floor, know. and i did the parallel bars oh yeah why do you think i'm such a fucking could you do the iron piece of cross machinery? could you do the iron cross on well, the rings? dana that's the fake well, thing they do with cgi i, just want, I, just but want, I needed to get context how I, good you are. <laughs> I i could do i could do where i'm on my like an l sit on the ground not a V, but an L, you know, you're on your okay. fingertips, stick your legs out. I could do a, I do, I was best on the parallel bars and then um, pommel horse was tougher. Could you do that thing on the pommel horse where, you know, you sort of go swing your legs a little your bit. Legs yeah. like, they're yeah. like dead bumpet legs. Yeah. Cause I was all obviously upper body strength, but my um, legs were puny and weak. And then I also did, what was it? Oh, the parallel bars I did the best on. The, the rings are very hard because you have to sort of dislocate when you flip around Ugh. and it's very hard to do the first Doesn't one. You got to trust that you're going to ruin your shoulders for life. And then uh dated my coach. No, I, uh, I have a, I have a quick question about your break dancing, which I'm just going to the phones. The question is, <laughs> do you carry a slab of cardboard? We did. You? Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. I was That's cool. A must. Uh, that and I, I remember. Here's what I remember of my breakdancing days. We always had a slab of cardboard with sort of duct tape together because you have to, you know, you try and find like we have a, a couple, like something like a refrigerator cardboard thing. You know, big, so big, you have a big, big yeah. piece. And then I remember walking around endlessly with a with a huge radio and the enormous amount of money <laughs> oh, right. it, would, it would cost to buy those fucking D batteries. Oh, the you know, batteries! Yeah, you needed you like eighty of up. them, you know, and the, that went in the back. Oh yeah, they take like forty, yeah, and you got to go get a pack, and it's like so much money, and, and then you play oh, it for like two right. hours, and all of a sudden the tape starts slowing down, and the batteries go. Like, <laughs> 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 I said a hip hop hippie now. Yeah. Yeah. Jump mm. start, you don't stop. I, I know that whole song. Uh, yeah. So anyway, can we, can we talk ahead, for Nana. a few minutes about how you became? <laughs> who you are like your childhood just a little bit because i don't know where you, you came from Break i know your mom was actually um mm -hmm. um big a, part of it a bit well no it wasn't a big part of it. i'm i got i don't even know where to begin i i got arrested when i was a real a kid for vandalizing cars and i um and part of my sentence because uh, i obviously can't send a you know 12 year old or 13 year old to the slammer <laughs> um my sentence was that i had to do this summer program in washington dc which was breakdancing um so you were sentenced to break I was sentence, dance. I love it. Sentenced to a this is lifetime like a movie. of dance, you know. Um <laughs> but no, it was like it was like a weird thing. I did these like summer programs. Like I mean, I felt like I was always in like some summer program for summer school or summer. Were you in trouble or, more? Was that a one off or were you kind of in trouble with the law a little bit? I was a juvenile delinquent too for a while, but not I wasn't home. like a juvenile delinquent, like, you know, like any high criminal activity. It was more just mm -hmm. kind of um I was extremely hyperactive and unfocused. So that would always inevitably lead to trouble. Like I would just do things impulsively, like a lot of young boys do, um, mm. where you just do something stupid. You know, like I remember I threw a, a rock through a cab window once. Like, and I mean, but it wasn't, it was, wasn't like I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to fucking throw this rock through a cab. It was like, oh, there's a rock. Now I'm holding the rock. What would happen if, I threw this, and before that yeah. thought had finished, it was already through a window. You know what I mean? Like, it was that kind of hyperactivity, yeah. I guess. Uh, impulse control. I guess uh, boys' brains uh, ADD don't really... ADD used to be called ants in your pants. Ants you in your right. pants. Yeah, so... That was the diagnosis back then. My mom was a writer. He was a lawyer. He was a... Um, he was he was a, a vietnam veteran uh and uh and then went into law when he got back and um my mom was a writer for the washington post uh a columnist or an essayist i should say um, for both the washington Ching. post and the new york times Ching. was she writing during watergate Ching. she wasn't she was started writing okay. sort of in the 80s you know but she did okay. used to take me into the you know the that big sort of 
uh, enormous, you know, that was famous from all the presidents in that big war room. She was in one of those floors. Oh, those are cool. Yeah. Oh, and she's the war room. Room. This is when I was really little. She would, yeah, she'd like stuff me under the desk and it was six trillion ball typewriters and, you know, endless huh? amounts of cigarette smoke. And, so another thing uh, that Flynn Filler told me, I can't remember his real name, uh, that you're you're a great illustrator, and I know you you studied visual arts and stuff. Just another kind of thing you can do. So you, when did that start? And I started um, in when I was really little. I I had a I loved I loved drawing. So I went to I ended up going to college for both visual art and drama. So I graduated as a double major. And when I got mm. to New York, I I actually was doing better with the visual art stuff, like, um, uh, meaning like I wasn't doing like, you know, I wasn't like a painter in the, you know, I wasn't like doing landscapes or anything. I would do like big sort of murals, graffiti type stuff. I worked in a bunch of clubs and, you know, I would do graffiti, graffiti. to a wall. And nice. Just, Did you ever, yeah, are you like Basquiat then? Sort of like, in, yeah, it was more sort of like an anime sort of graffiti style, mm -hmm. sort of a hip hop, blah, 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 you know, like. Phil Hartman had that. I know, I've just read that. He was, did he design he designed a, album, album covers, covers and yeah. stuff? Yeah. 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 So, so it's, it's weird. Company. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You did Phil Red Hour. All time faves. Logo. What's that? Ben, ben Stiller's production company. Oh, yeah, I did his Red his Hour logo, logo. Yeah. at one point. I just jump in with some nonsense and everyone goes, what? <laughs> well, I know it's, it's no. so cool. I mean, do you, do you still, uh, they would call it in the old days, doodle, do you just when you're talking or trying to come up with something, do you yeah, just do little I'll, drawings I'll, and I'll stuff? I'll do little sketches in the margins or something mm -hmm. um, uh, or of something if I'm reading. At, well, but I also just sort of keep a loose sketchbook. I don't, but I, I don't do it that much, but I, I do like to, occasionally when i remind myself if i'm not working i'll just be like oh yeah i could let's draw something do you still own a 64 pack of crayola that big cinder block with a balcony in it no i hate every that goddamn man. color the rainbow i with hate clear. crayons so much um <laughs> because you can't they, get a solid line out of them well they're just yeah. not like a medium i like they you know they just even when i was little they frustrated me i wanted like a black mm -hmm. pen or i wanted a really fresh magic marker I did not want a fucking crash. fresh one fresh right out of the box before the ink starts to run out yeah you don't want to dry it magic market. god <laughs> listen to this guy uh <laughs> i had a crayons with a sharpener on the back so mm -hmm. uh oh wait do you think you know watergate you're just saying someone said it uh i did you know do you think kids today know that if something bad happens like if some if there's a scandal at disney and they call it disney gate like, you know, they say gate about everything that they think they know it comes from Watergate. I don't think so. They probably think it comes from, you know, uh, it's just a thing Clinton people gate say. They don't or, know, the know gate part is. They gate. don't know what it means. It's a weird, it's a weird thing to actually catch on something gate. Because Watergate was one word, wasn't it? Was it a building? Watergate hotel. Yeah, I the believe. Watergate hotel and offices. Like it was yeah. just a building. It's a, it's a condo. Mm -hmm. That shitty little building never knew how famous it was going to get. Never. If it had only, it known. shouldn't. It was famous. Though. I mean, it's yeah. a, it is a sort of a, a landmark in Washington. Oh, I don't know anything. I'm just talking out of my. Head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then again, I mean, you as far as that. your own ambition and stuff, so then yeah. you're gonna, then you're going to become a Broadway actor. But you did study in college a bit. But you're an illustrator, and then you you just auditioned and started getting work, or did you I just struggle? Started audition. Could, yeah, we all I struggled just like everybody else. I you know it's a good it's it's fun to reminisce about because I, I came up with a great, there were other actors that are now we all know. And, and we were all sort of in that group and we all sort of started to happen or things started going well at different times. But it, New York was, a, I think different than LA, you know, LA, I feel like and I could be wrong, you know, but LA always like whenever the couple of times I did go to audition out there, um, I would always, it felt really competitive and not good. And, not like everyone didn't want everyone to do well in New York because a lot of times we're auditioning for theater, things that, you know, that it felt like supportive. Like you could see a friend at an audition and be like, Hey, great job. Or I hope you could do well. You know, like it was, it felt like, mm -hmm. um, it didn't feel competitive, you know, where LA, LA is, was, uh, was oppressive and, and is dark and weird. I mean, auditioning there, it just was not, not fun. Yeah. You're driving, terrible. you go park in the structure. You then, I mean, just the amount of effort that it took to mm -hmm. go to an audition in Los Angeles, you know, it was an all day affair sometimes. And, but in Do you New remember, York, uh, you, you had to go yeah. pick up the script, like in the Valley the day before and then 
bring the whole script home, read it, and then go back to audition for three lines in the script. Yeah, terrible. Or or they wouldn't even give you that. They just give you some pages. You like, Sides. Oh, how am I supposed to do this? And is this this is pre cell phones, right? Because I would get lost yeah. and I'd start crying. I just pull over and go, I'm fucked. I'm, my my appointment is in ten minutes. I'm in Culver Thomas City. Thomas guide, yeah. And you'd look for a pay phone. It was a nightmare oh, <laughs> for you youngsters worst. listening. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Whereas in New York, so when you do it, it was like it felt like you know. You, you, dropping off something at the dry cleaners then you hit your audition then you go to the grocery store you know like it it felt like an errand yeah. more than a and in a weird way you can kind of get more of them done here in new york but it would always felt weird because they always be like yeah they want to put you on tape for everyone in la and i just always envisioned this enormous plane that just had tapes dumping off the back of it you know, <laughs> just into nothing yeah, just... you would never hear back from anything you just go, never oh. You know. That was so humiliating. I even, they said, you'd be good for commercial because I wasn't really clicking in any other uh, area. So they go, <laughs> you've got a great look for commercial. You have blonde hair. And <laughs> I was like, mm, I've got a pretty sweet body, you know? So they were like, and gymnast. I look young. So I go, still my gymnast stuff was going on a little bit at that point. And then I get this uh, SBV, Sutton Barth and Venereal Disease, we called it. And it was a commercial agent. And they would send me out. You know, God love them twice a day. So I'd go to the valley when it's 100 degrees wearing a suit, and then go in the trunk and get shorts, drive over, and you're in college in this one. And you're, and I went up for one year and I did not get one nothing. So nothing. humiliating. <laughs> it's <laughs> how did I fucking ever make it out of that? It was like I, maddening. <laughs> Talk about anxiety and sadness. Like, we had I to do a luckily podcast there were no names for this. back then. I just had it. I was like, like do you remember those auditions that you'd go on where like it would be for the, a commercial and you'd and they wouldn't want to tell you what the product was or they wouldn't want to <laughs> tell you what it, what the concept was and then yeah. you'd go into a room and there'd be like a beach ball, a pool noodle, um, you know, a, a funny pair of glasses and they'd be like, just do something. And you'd be like, oh, yuck. Like, no. Clown. Get around, jump around, clown. They go, we're not going to tell you what it is. I go, go fuck yourself. No, I didn't. I said, okay, what is it? I, I jump on the beach. Well, ew. Yeah. The worst <laughs> one I ever went on was actually for Thin Red Line. And it was, although I didn't know it at the time, and it wasn't, but it was, and it was, I, I knew it was a Terrence Malick movie and it was a war yeah. movie. And it was the worst audition I've ever had in my life Ugh. because they, they didn't, um, they, 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 of course, there was no script. Of course, there was no character. There was no whatever. And I go to this office building on 68th Street or something, wherever it was. And um, this, and it wasn't with him, obviously. It was like with some, you know, the second assistant yeah. to the casting director. And then they sort of flick on the camera and they were like, okay, just pretend you're in war. And I was like, what? And like, they were like, you can dump over the chairs or pretend they're, you're in a foxhole or whatever. And I was like, bang, bang. like what the hell am I supposed like? So then I kind of you're just on the alone on the stage and I'm now pretending, pretending you're in war, I'm shooting, but I don't have any lines. There's nothing I can say, yeah. and I'm not going to. So what did you do? <laughs> for, I just basically kind of rolled around on the floor for about three minutes, and then that, and then went. I, I don't think I can do this. But that's one of those ones you're like, you really just feel like a monkey on a string. You're like, what? You know, you have to at least give me something. Tell me what I'm supposed to do in this. Right, just give me an angle. You're scared and war. You, you, these people are coming, and <laughs> yeah, you got to exactly. tell your friends. I know. Give me the setup. You know, it's like. David yeah. would have done it. He would have yeah. r- hauled out his microphone. Sure, you guys would have been great at it. Hey, Sarge. Just, no, I would, just I would have. I don't know about this. I don't know about these <laughs> missiles, Sarge. I don't <laughs> these know. These <laughs> missiles. We left him back there. No, no, there was no <laughs> missiles, guys. Missiles, Sarge. I don't like missiles. <laughs> I don't like missiles. My glasses are broken. <laughs> no, it was Sean Penn stomping around with, a, with one of the prostitutes in the movie. And, and he's Sean. like, we're going to hook up with this girl and we're going to pass her around. And Michael J. Fox is like, you got to give me a minute on this here. Sorry. Like he was, he was the nice guy in the movie and they were all casualties of war. Guy. Of course. Yeah. Great movie. <laughs> it's so funny that I would even remember that movie, let alone base my whole stand up routine. on it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's always a winner. So did you, I mean, when did you know you could, you had an ear, like you could do accents and voices Were you asked and then just learned, I can learn it or because it seems like you'd have a, I have some English ear. family so I can, I can kind of um, do a, a, fair, a couple English accents. Um, Which ones? Oh, I don't like, I, I'm, well, I'm terrible. At doing I mean, there's the, yeah, the sort of the, you know, the clip sort of upper class English. Then there's sort of the, me and Barnett are always doing bits on, um, on the sort of the Guy Ritchie accent. 
<laughs> you know, to like, do the job. All right, let's do the job. You know, are you going to do the job or are we going to do the job? You know, so from like snatch. Like, yeah, literally. Like yeah. Cockney the Rami's super like, working class yeah. Brit. Yeah. Super I working class. I got one. Yeah, like, got the detailed. tuppence in me suppence. Yeah, exactly. Come on, let's just go. That's get my the whole bubble. audition. Thank you. Around the Call me. Pop round it. <laughs> <laughs> I like in your audition for the war, you're rolling around like an idiot and then you just go, yeah, I'm not good for this. <laughs> you, you cut them off from firing you. You go, I'm not into it. I'm, you I'm not, not you into it. You don't have to Listen, call me back. Um, tell Terrence uh, I'm not going to do it. It's a no-go, but hit me on the next one. Yeah. So the next time they asked you to do something like that, you just you just tapped out. Go, no, okay, then you learn, around. To, <laughs> you learn to just go, well, I need some pages or something. You do, you do need, you can't. Oh, look. okay. It's kind of like, Handing someone a crayon and saying, "Hey, can you paint the Sistine Chapel?" And you're like, "No, I, I, this, I only have a crayon." <laughs> no, it's actually easier because they go, "Just paint something." You go, "Oh, here's a wave." At least you can you can make up something. But if it's just a random war, you're like, "Am I happy for <laughs> yeah, the war?" I didn't, Am I, I didn't sad? Think, Am I is scared? The Korean War, the Vietnam War. Yeah, <laughs> that matters. War of 1812. They go, no, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And when so do you, you see? Oh yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Get a good. I, I, I just wonder where you when you when you first wrote a film, <laughs> and it you was Tropic Thunder. That? It was with Ben. I mean, what? Ben, Get out of town! Yeah, God, where's the applause button? He well, I mean, it was a long road, uh, but it was you know Ben used to. Um, me and Ben became friends. I was doing a play on Broadway um, uh, with his then girlfriend, and and we and I was a huge Ben Stiller show fan. Um, sure. Definitely. Just thought it was hilarious, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So he came to the show and or opening night, or he was kind of hanging around the theater a, a couple times. And I was sort of quoting the, his show back to him. And we ended up sort of becoming friends and found out that we had a very similar sense of humor. Um, and he would, and he was just sort of blowing up at the time doing, you know, with like something about Mary and, and, uh, you know. His, oh, fuck. He's right in the pocket. Yeah. That was the moment that he was like really exploding and, People mm -hmm. were yelling at him on the street. Um, but when he would come to do to New York to do like, you know, Letterman or uh, Conan or whatever, he would do these like really elaborate bits, you know, uh, you know, like he'd really work on these, you know, sort of segments. Talk show bits, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would sort of like help. We, we'd sort of sit around and come up with bits for him to do, you know, or he would say something like he would go on Letterman. I remember one he did where he, he said, yeah, I don't really want to talk about the movie I'm promoting. I just, you know, you know I, I had to take a break and I, I've, I've been in France and I've been painting and um, Letterman's like, oh, you've been painting. He's like, yeah, it's just got a little sort of ramshackle place in the South of France. And I pay this prostitute and I paint her and, you know, every night and blah, blah, blah. It, and Letterman's like, oh, okay. And then the reveal was that he would hold up these, these, uh, this artwork that was just done in pasta with watercolors and like glue, <laughs> like a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> like made out of fusilli. Um, so we'd work on stupid bits like that. Like, when you talk about um, doing TT. What's that? When TT, did you Tropic discuss? Thunder. Oh, yeah. Then we, so then he, he had the original sort of idea for it, which was, um, it was, it was, let me talk about Thin Red Line. It was that period of time when it felt like everyone was going to do a war movie. Like, you know, like Oliver Stone was doing a war movie and Stanley Kubrick Platoon, was doing it. Like, it was there were so Platoon, many right? Vietnam movies mm -hmm. in a row. Um, yeah. and the press at the time for them was very sort of serious, you know, and all the actors, when they would get interviewed, would be like, yeah, it was intense. Like, you know, they said, oh, <laughs> you know, when we shot, um, you know, Oliver wanted us to be in war, you know, and, and let me tell you where was war, you know, we kind of, and we would make yeah, us yeah. eagle. And so he had a, the original sort of joke, sort of, if it was the one line pitch to me was, um, let's do a movie about a bunch of actors that come back to LA after making a war movie and they all have PTSD <laughs> from the movie. Um, so that was sort of the original idea. Um, and then I sort of was like, well, what if we just, and also Blair Witch was really popular at the time. I said, what if it's like that they go to do a war movie, but then they get caught up in a real war. And that was sort of, that was the sort of the kernel that's sort like of like moment. Yeah. 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 That's great. And then everything. And then you get good people because, uh, by the way, yeah, okay. So you get good people because, ben, you know, he's doing well. It's a funny idea. Uh, yeah, it did. Well, the script, it took a long, it was years of writing that script because I was working at that point and doing, I think I was doing Six Feet Under or something. And he was obviously like on Fuego. So um, we, mm -hmm. we would sort of pass the script back and forth. Like I'd write some we'd write like a funny scene that had no place to go. Like it was a funny, yeah. like here's an idea that's funny. 
like the first scene in the movie where he's you know got his hands blown off and it's the guy going like come on you can make it you know and he's like i can't feel my legs and you know and he's stop it you know like, um so i wrote that scene and and that just made us laugh and i don't know we just sort of tossed it around um and then gradually a script started to formulate take shape and it was it was monty python s that first scene because you have real violence or you know the 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 two knights and he starts yeah. cutting the arms off and the legs <laughs> off yeah but in terms of ben playing that so serious no man you know i mean we had a like really a million inspired. lines for that you know and I, the 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 seed the joke in that scene is that he's an action star obviously and that he can't cry and he's he's working across from you know lawrence olivier essentially <laughs> And and mm -hmm. it frustrates the other actor. He's like, you can't even squirt, you can't even get the tears going. Like, what the fuck's up with my man? You know, like um and so <laughs> Is that, that Robert Downey. <laughs> that's Robert Downey. Yeah. You know, so that, that's when we sort of pan out to reveal that this is the shooting of a movie, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's obviously, as you know, uh, just such a huge comedy. I it's there's never been anything quite like it. I don't think I'd never seen a comedy like it's that. It's also like a huge, I mean it, Without any jokes, it's, it was a huge movie. Meaning, just as far as yeah. like visual, I mean, effects. To and, shoot, yeah, oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, you had explosives. It was shit. as big as any war movie. You know, we we, I mean, as far as the look, I mean, Ben's such. I mean, he's obviously, you know, does get the credit. You know, um, but he's often not credited enough. I think with how great a director he is. You know, he is like a real camera mover. He knows how to. Where was it? Oh Where yeah, you? where did you shoot it? Hawaii. Uncle oh, was that in Vietnam? <laughs> yeah. No, we didn't that. do Vietnam. We didn't need the authentic background. Oh, why? We needed to see a couple of trees, rainforest, but to make the cast happy. There's two. There's, <laughs> there's a thing about a, a movie uh, in comedies, uh, probably dramas too. It's just these uh, whatever you call them, word packages that just are transcendent, that are funnier as time goes on. You know, and I, I think one of them that's less controversial would be the Tom Cruise, Les Grossman. I want you to take one step back and literally fuck your face your or face. your own face. <laughs> yeah. Which one was it? I'm not sure. Fuck your own face. But that's the, that's the kind of thing. And again, like Monty Python, -y, I don't know where that influence came from, but those type of lines, that nonsensical thing, um, I assume it wasn't a guy alone in a room, or were you together at that point where you're kind of riffing what could that character say? That or? character uh, came out of, you know, we, you know, we wanted Tom to be in the movie very badly. And he, it was kind of, um, he was like, well, I read the script and there's, he's like, there's no like studio presence. Like, why, why don't we create like a studio uh, character, you know? And I just mm -hmm. had a really bad experience working for Harvey Weinstein. And so um, oh. on a movie that <laughs> okay. I had directed and I, I thought. Shocker. And Whatever so, happened to that guy? <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, I, and I just wanted to like, I just wanted to, um, I wanted to somehow memorialize that bad experience. And, um, and so that's how I got that character, you know? Wow. And, and it's, it's even so funnier. It's funny. even funnier. Like just that, like that Ray, I remember Joel Silver one time <laughs> came up to me and he goes, Hey, was that character based on me? And I go, no. And he goes, damn it. <laughs> he, wanted, <laughs> he like wanted it to be based on the <laughs> Oh, funny. Well, the Popeye forearms and the hands and, yeah, and, the and hair. then yeah. the Tom Cruise, uh, which you know everyone loved the new Top Gun. I mean, he gets shinier and brighter when I look back and I see him now, and I look at him in that movie when he's doing the dance, slapping the ass at the end. It's like yeah. the guy is really funny. He's uh, so uh, funny, and he's so yeah. committed. You know, um, yeah. And I remember kind of because he has some really hard charging lines in that mm -hmm. in that movie. Um, yeah, some you really say, out of control yeah. shit. Do you and feel I at like, all like, odd giving him these lines? Like, He's going to say, Tom Cruise is going to say this? Like, yeah. And this is before we had seen him in any of the, the tests and hair and makeup and stuff like well, that. Well, without saying the line, which were the ones that were the most scary or you really couldn't use? It was too far. No. Uh, maybe I you think, can't. You know, we had sort of like, Ben's a really smart director. We, you know, if, if we were to sort of pile the script up in all the pages that were written, it would mm -hmm. probably look like a phone book or, or three phone books stacked on top of each other. Ben is really good at, um, we would always sort of shoot like sort of, you know, an A, B, and C category of jokes within the scene and then alternates, alternates, alternates. We had sort of these alternate mm -hmm. scripts that we would go, okay, now we're mm -hmm. going to do one where you say this. And so in the edit, you know, when we could, 
you know, when Ben was sort of testing the movie, uh, he was able to see, you know, oh, this, this, you know, went a little too far. Let's dial it back. And, you know, mm-hmm. and it could be something simple, just like too many F-bombs in a row or something. Yeah. And so, we, mm-hmm. you know, and so he could, but, he could ride the edit, ride the cut of the movie um, to sort of find the sweet spot um, because we would have shot all different very slight variations of every scene you know yeah and i think that you know obviously a lot of movies have a lot of people involved and it's nice to have one you know creative vision with other people with almost exact same sensibilities that's how a great movie has to get made it has to be just everyone's on the same page yeah someone and me and ben i think we're the real guardians of that we you know we i think we both and by the time we shot that we were both so we had been with it for so long that we intuitively knew exactly what anything would want it to be if it had to change on the day. Mm-hmm. It, it mm-hmm. was a real kind of like, you know, um, great um, collaboration. It was sort of a real sort of mini Lennon McCartney thing that was happening on the making of that, you know? Like, wow. Um, well, the way uh, everything yeah, I mean, got it, in, it's, it's great. The mm-hmm. way every, everything got in and there's no one blocking your shit. Like the studio Downey, everyone saying we're all in on this. We're all going to do everything. I don't care if it's offensive. And it's so funny. And then even Tom Cruise, to his credit, finding a spot to be in, you know, not getting out of it, saying no, we'll find something, and then doing it. And then I'm sure if you throw him lines, he laughs and just does another take and says, "Oh yeah, that's funny. Let's try that." And then when it all comes together and everyone's shocked to see him, especially in a movie that's already good. And was Woody playing his assistant? Was Woody in there? What's that? Was Woody Woody, Harrelson? No, I think McConaughey. No, McConaughey. Oh, McConaughey. McConaughey was yeah. played the agent. McConaughey. Yeah. Heck. Yeah. Are those two different people? I know <laughs> no, for sure. they're the know same the fucking person. Okay. It's unbelievable. Did you guys, uh, did Cruz break a lot when he said lines like, go fuck your own face or something? <laughs> he did. I mean, was there he, a lot of breaking? He enjoyed himself. I, you know, I remember, <laughs> and then I remember, you know, because <laughs> first, then you give him these outrageous lines, and then- Tom Cruise knows how to sell a fucking line. You know, I mean, that guy yeah. is super. <laughs> now he's playing it like it's a straight up drama. I mean, it's, he's not really winking or leaning in or doing anything. He's just mm-hmm. playing it like as if he was in, you know, one of his other movies. When, whenever Tropic Thunder comes up, you know, I get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, why well, you couldn't make that movie today. And I kind of, it bums me out because I'm like, I think you can make that movie today. It wouldn't look exactly like that movie, but you know, I remember kind of taking it hard when, when people, you know, as you would when, when people are, you know, trying to boycott something that you think is, is actually on your side or on their side. Um, and I remember I lucked out a couple of years later after the fact, um, having a drink with Mel Brooks and kind of moaning about it a yeah. little bit. Um, and, and he just, he sort of stopped me and he just went, nope, uh, you, look, you have to just make sure the joke is aimed perfectly at the person who's the idiot, you know, and, and that's your job is to, you know, you know, obviously, um, we're not trying to make jokes about anybody except for sure. Hollywood actors in that movie, you know, um, and egos and studios and that kind of stuff. Um, so the minute you're sort of, I, he was basically, he gave me some comfort around, you know, cause his movies are so brilliant and, you know, you could say, equally say like, well, you can't make those movies today, but yes, you can, you know, you can make, you know, his, his jokes. It's weird. Everyone, I think when you see a Mel Brooks movie, you don't think, oh, well, you know, uh, that's really uncool that he would write that. that you like, you know, yeah, what a horrible what person team he's batting for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And obviously you're talking about blazing saddles, which, you know, Richard Pryor wrote a lot of, a lot of it with, with him. And, um, Obviously, all the racist people in the movie are idiots, <laughs> and Cle- Cleavon Little is the smartest guy in yeah. town. And there's some it, very, very naughty words in that movie, and crazy things yep. are said in that movie. But, um, but you know, again, I don't know. Well, we talked to Bill Burr about his stand-up because he'll he'll write outside the line sometimes, and he says for himself, intention matters. Like, absolutely, what, yeah. Are you going after sure. a disenfranchised section of the population? Or are you satirizing more privileged people if you want or wherever the target is? So I, I think um, I'm still recovering that you got to hang out with Mel Brooks and talk to him for Just an for hour. Just for a minute. I'm not, it's not like we had a salon going uh, in the West Village yeah. and we're lounging around but, 
smoking jackets. I like that uh, Steve Spielberg, Steve, said um, he wishes he didn't take the guns out of E.T. I just read that Russia. too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting that he would say that. Uh, yeah. It's a weird thing, you know, like, um, you know, they, people, it's just censorship is a weird thing, you know, like, and it, and people are genuinely, I think, afraid to write things and perform things and do things, mm. you know, because no one wants to get their head chopped off, you know. Sure. Days. You don't want comedy to turn into the same five jokes that everyone's allowed to use. And then, so when you go outside and try to break some ground, I guess there will be more pushback than normal, but as long as it doesn't ruin your life. But I, it, the intention, again, you're trying to be funny, you're trying to be this, and no one's out to get someone. Yeah, there's, um, I, in, actually, I was watching this Oscar Levant play with Sean Hayes uh, that I was watching the other day, um, that I saw the other day. He has some great lines. Oscar Levant has some great lines where he says mm -hmm. things like, you know, there's no such thing as a sincere joke. You know, you can't bring the house down with a wholesome gag. You know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. something has to be dangerous about it you know um and catch people off guard and the element of surprise and it's not what you think they're going to say and it's just it's just funny i mean you know we're, we're all in the same but it's nature is not respectful you know what i mean nor should it be you know what about yeah. zoolander you did zoolander you worked on, on that with ben i worked on two with uh with ben evil 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 dj <laughs> and i was and i was the evil dj in both. full makeup <laughs> and have, was that that's that look like fun and that guy was break dancing. That and you had him. That, that's actually I. I was. Did break you break dance? At, yeah, yeah. I, I had the break dance fight with Owen Wilson in that uh, with uh, oh, Hansel. Okay. That's the big Act Three fight scene between me and Hansel. Was, Owen's always great. Um, did you go when Woody? Uh, Woody is in your new show. Did you go when he did Saturday Night Live? I did. I went there and saw that. It's hilarious. Oh, you did. <laughs> it, was good. it was fun. Yeah, it was. It was awesome. Yeah. He. Um, He's, did, he's, uh, he's, uh, him and Owen Wilson, the people hey. I've met, there's such a cool kind of, I don't know, Texas yeah, frequency to them. There's something them. about. It's so funny when you do, I would actually like to hear your take on this, Dana. There is a version where you can impersonate Woody, Owen, and McConaughey probably all at the same time. <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> yeah, there's like, something they should all hang out all together. I think they like do. This and, and yeah, it. no, you were fine. I don't care. She's not even mad at you. And then they're like, I mean, Woody, these you sort rhythm. of slip into more of a stoner kind of like that's what hey, I don't like about Woody. You know? <laughs> I don't, he, I don't do Woody, impersonation. Woody is like he's he's still he's so he's really cute. You know, I was looking at him on the show. He still has those dimples, and there's something just. Uh, incredibly likable about him. I think you two are great in that. Is this as foils for each other? The, We're kind of um, like a, you know, it's, you know, we, in in life and in this show, you know, we're very much, it's a very sort of odd couple relationship, you know, um, you know, feel is going to or, you know, like, and it's just, he's, he is a very kind of, I mean, in the show, he's a more sort of uptight, gruff, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But on yeah. set, you know, Howard Hunt, Hunt, Howard Hunt from yeah. the CIA. Yeah. 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 We just, we laughed a lot. He's a very fun guy to work with. He's, he's very sort of infectious and he's very, very, very laid back in a way that I wish I could be. You know, he's mm -hmm. so, he's one of those guys that can show up to set like 12 minutes late and 15 minutes late, and be like, oh, hey, whoa. Why is everyone? Oh, okay. Like he, there's no judgment about <laughs> yeah. it. He's like, oh, yeah. we're already here. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, he was like that here. even on SNL back in the '90s. There was almost like he, what am I supposed to do? It's all kind of thrown away, and then he just lands it perfectly. And then he's exactly. great. Yeah. Yeah. He but doesn't we, have. I feel like he has no cortisol in his system whatsoever. <laughs> like he and just it's doesn't. Just great for. <laughs> He, uh, we had a running gag when he hosted uh, when I was a cast member and I was just kidding with him because, you know, I liked him immediately. And the running gag was you could never be depressed, Woody, the rest of your life because you know me. You actually know me. And so that became a running <laughs> thing. He, he sent me a frame photo with that phrase on it. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> you know me. How could you ever be sad? Just think of it. Just all that guy. But he's so great. So I know that uh, Justin has a favorite. We'll let you go in a second, Justin. You have a favorite. Do you love you love After Hours, Dane? Do you remember After Hours? After that movie? Hours. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is it Griffin, Griffin Dune? Griffin, Griffin Dunn? Dunn, the best. Jeff Goldblum, Michelle Pfeiffer. Am I crazy? No, not Jeff Goldblum. He's not that. It's um, him, <laughs> Catherine O'Hara. Um, oh God, it's such a great cast. It's Scorsese's one sort of comedy, I guess. Or well, who's Michelle Pfeiffer in? 
What, what are you talking about? She was in Scarface. Were you no, talking about Scarface or After Hours? I'm after talking hours. about After Hours, but I think I'm talking about... <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer Don't was amazing. gang up on me. <laughs> no, we won't. We I started you. knowing what it was because I knew... What's the one with Jeff Goldblum and Michelle Pfeiffer? Where they go um, out all night, isn't it? What's the one with Michelle... Do you know if I'm, is that even a movie? Are those people? Dangerous liaisons? <laughs> no, that no. was John Malkovich. I'm, I'm mad at both guessing. of you. I wanted to know what's on Justin's uh, favorite film list, you yeah. know, or, or, you know, I always hate that bet your favorite or films you revisit or films that stayed with you. Young Frankenstein, you, if we're talking about Mel Brooks, is definitely fuck, on that. After yeah. Hours. yeah. I stole a big bit from Young Frankenstein for Tropic Thunder, actually. I mean, that's you did well. But, it, but it was you were influenced. influenced. The Beatles were influenced. Influenced, yeah. <laughs> There's the scene where um, Jack Black gets tied to the tree to kick drugs. You know, he says, "No yeah. matter what, yeah. don't let me off that tree." You know, uh, you know, I'm mm. really cunning, I'm really yeah. baffling, but don't let me. Blah blah blah. That's kind of a lift uh, from Young Frankenstein when he goes into the room. Gene Wilder goes, goes in the room with out. the monster. He said, "Don't let me out of this room. No, no matter what, what I, I say. no matter what I say, I'm going to blow." <laughs> so it's it's in the same universe that joke. Um, and then, of course, he goes in there and he's immediately pleading. To get let out. He's like, <laughs> okay, so yeah. It's all in vaudeville. It's all in vaudeville. At yeah. some points, everything was has been Cape done. Fear. But that, yeah. Cape Fear. Yeah. Uh, Cape Fear. A recent so guest, that was a movie. Sarah Sherman from SNL said she watches that all the time to cheer up. The, the second the Cape, one, the De Niro the, one. The second one, I think, was the second one she yeah. meant. Not oh. the Mitchum one, but the, that movie is so yeah. good. It really is. Do you remember yeah. in the Ben Stiller show, he, he did that? Um, he did that sort of fake, I guess, fake trailer where it's uh, Eddie Munster in Cape Fear. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's he is the Eddie Munster of all time. There's, um, that's why that, that show, because he had left SNL, he talked about it here, and then he suddenly, I was at that Emmy Awards, and then he was so shocked that he won Best Show, but it was... <laughs> It's, it's another show that stands the test of time. I know. He was a, he, Some you know, of those sketches, I can't believe like that it. group of mm -hmm. writers, performers, Bob Odenkirk. I mean, Jesus. His Manson. Yeah. He did that Charles Manson. It's so hilarious. It's I so know, funny. Nothing, nothing, Come nothing, on. Nothing, 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 like, like, I'm Bob Odenkirk. I'm Bob. <laughs> so good. Oh, you're so good. Uh, what so about, as far as SNL, should we cover that for a second? Yeah. Let's let's cover SNL. SNL. I was texting with uh, uh, David yesterday. I was Kyle, like, I've never been on SNL, so I don't know what to... Uh, you know, because no, I, I you love listening scene. to the podcast, but I, you know, massive, massive, I, you know, I'm, I haven't said it at the top, Dana, David already knows I'm a, a huge fan of him, but mm -hmm. also likewise you. Well, that was, we heard that you liked our podcast, at least I threw David or something like week three. So I immediately yeah, you were early. was you were really early. happy as being a super fan of yours. And then like, he likes our podcast. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, I mean, it is like... <laughs> SNL, I mean, it must be a curse to be an SNL cast member because I'm sure you get, you know, uh, bombarded with questions, you know, about every th aspect of it. What's it like working live? What's the thing? What's the most scary thing? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, probably the worst thing, which is like, you know what you should do? You know what would make a great SNL bit? You know what would be great on <laughs> SNL? Like, this is, this is, I know. This is, you know, Dana, I have one funny <laughs> sketch idea and I want to go host and just do one sketch and leave. I could handle that. Hosting well, just do, so just do a guest spot. Just do a guest spot. I but know, but it wouldn't make any sense because it's not. Topical. No, I said just do a guest spot. I don't Dana. want to <laughs> just do a walk on. It's, there's a lot of those walk ons now where it's like, oh, look, there's, you know, Fred Armisen. He's not a member of the cast. He's not hosting. He's just walking. Or Matt Damon like, is character. playing this character. Or I'll be Christopher yeah. walk on. <laughs> you know, no. I saw I saw a great walk in sketch where he's watering plants. He's a guard and, and might, talking I'm, to the plants. I might be lying again. Oh. Yeah. And he goes, they're cactuses. And he goes, cactuses. Are intimidating, so I put googly eyes on him. He's got these skinny <laughs> yeah, He puts googly eyes on him, then he keeps saying googly eyes, and it's hysterical. Perfect googly eyes. Perfect for for walking. Make no, you, him say, you were on SNL with Kyle Mooney. He was I doing did some a little. He yeah. just called me up and said, "Hey, can you just do it?" It was a walk. It was a, technically a walk on. It was nothing um, meaningful. Oh. But uh, well, this well, is the only thing we're going to air of the whole podcast. So that's um, it. Hi, Dana. What, what's in your mind? I think Justin Thrill really wants to host the show. Well, that'd be terrific. I'll reach out to his people. <laughs> That's the last job. I definitely don't want to host SNL. I, that to me is absolutely Really? Are you too scared? scared? I get so scared by that. I mean, I don't blame part, you. And then I even like when I, you know, 
Amy Poehler used to always be like, come to, uh, you know, UCB, you know, when she was doing it here in New York. And I, mm-hmm. it would make me anxious. You know, I loved it, I, but it, it felt like watching trapeze work, you know, with no net. And it just made me so anxious. I much prefer kind of being able to go away, learn lines, really rehearse and, blah, 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 and then just come out like that. It's so seat of your pants. The idea to like on a Monday, you're kind of like, hey, what's the idea? And then by Tuesday, you're kind of fleshing it out. Wednesday, like, let's read it. And then by Saturday. No, it, it's crazy. It, it shouldn't exist sickening. in some ways. <laughs> The host did you come ask on. Woody, did he need any help with writing, any punch-ups on monologue or anything in no, the show? No, I saw him on Wednesday and he's like, ah, it's going to go well. But he was like out partying. He was like, it's going to be fun. <laughs> he like, couldn't you know, care like, It's going to be good. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 No. I, best I, way I think to, when best Ben way did it, it, I did a little, a little punch-up when he went on, sort of did a walk on a Zoolander. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, to me, it's like... But, and then when you see people who are genuinely relaxed doing it, because you can kind of uh, tell people who are... Unrela- not relaxed doing it you know not that their hands are shaking or anything like that but but it's normal but like phil harvey when you'd see him you'd go he had this kind of um you know plant your leg say the line beautifully confidence that was so just like nice to like great to watch and then obviously you guys you know like your delivery mm. on you know hollywood minutes and you know there was just a kind of like Ooh. when you can tell people are a having fun and b at least appear like they're not nervous. Phil was uh, uh, like, he was like, we hear uh, Dan Aykroyd was like, he almost was, it, well, he obviously was a pro and he was in so many things and he had this binder and he was, he could memorize, he could read the cards really well. But then in between scenes, he'd be reading a book about Evan Rude outboard motor I schematics. That happens. Like, how can you, yeah. I don't know. I would just be in such a state of distress. I think that, um, I don't know. You don't have to do it. I, I, no, I totally you get to. you. I mean, it, we, it's we hard to host decided. it. If I host it and there's a sketch somewhere you could do an Irish guy or British guy, I'll try to bring yeah, you in I'll just for it. one just scene. Just for one scene. Yeah. If we need a guy to lay on the floor and act like he's in the army. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We're going to do a whole sketch it's about improv, that. Really. I'm going to play. My worst nightmare is improvise. We go, we don't, we're not going to tell you what the sketch is. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what the sketch is. Just give me a beach ball, a pool noodle, and just send me out there. You know. Well, aside from his new show, he also owns Ray's Bar. And I uh, want to thank you for coming down today and talking to us, uh, Justin. Thank you for having me. And uh, I will see you on my next trip. When are you coming to New York, David? It's all pretty top secret, but, you know... I'll call you on some other channels. Yeah, send me the file. Could, your yeah, it's in like uh, Could we, there's only weeks. one th- other thing besides leftovers, yeah. which I think is a brilliant show. Mosquito Coast, all the stuff you've done. It's so you have such a cool career. And then you did this thing with Norman Lear, where you did those live. Yeah. It was all in the family and stuff. That that I thought was was gonna be a train wreck, but it really landed beautifully. Yeah, it was great. And you it know? actually, you know, it's become sort of an annual thing. Um I mean, talk about a, a, I mean, I really can't take credit for that show. That was an idea that I had where, to, that I imparted to Jimmy Kimmel, who then turned it into this sort of, you know, Super Bowl winning football team of, of talent, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a lot to pick from if you keep doing, you can keep doing Partridge Family, Happy Days, whatever you want. Well, I mean, we can, yeah, you can go, you can keep going. But I mean, it's- Can I like, play Fonzie? Fonzie? Everyone's like, can, everyone, everyone every day is like, why aren't you playing Fonzie? <laughs> Chachi, Chachi. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm already <laughs> down to Chachi. <laughs> that was quick. Take, Chachi was cool. Was quick Chachi, casting Chachi meeting. Chachi loves Joni or yeah, what was their show? It's great. Let's, what about Ralph Mouth? Um, um, <laughs> Ralph Mouth. Do you remember the beginning of Happy Days? And then I'll let you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, he takes the salt off. No, he has the salt. They put the salt shaker top back on, but they put it really loose and he pours it on his fries and it all goes over it. And he just looks back to camera and keeps chewing his gum. I'm like, he didn't even give a reaction. I thought it was genius. He didn't, <laughs> he you know, know what I mean? He didn't go, whoa. I love that that's like your brand out. Like, and it's like, and he that's, what, even that's where I go. I can, can do that. Pour it out of the. <laughs> He's my <laughs> guy. Yeah. That's my Uda Hagen. That was your moment that you Uda. realized, like, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. I go, oh, do nothing. I can do that. What was your early comedy? Impl- not to prolong this, but I'm. Since oh, we're I'm having a great time. Oh, I yeah, just early, just to bring your early influence besides me. Like I oh, like me. my um, earliest comedy memories are uh, Mel Brooks, but 
also my dad making me stay up to watch SNL with him, you know, Belushi, Aykroyd. Yeah, uh, yeah. Gilda Radden. 100%, same, same thing. thing. Life of Brian, early on, Animal House, um, Holy SNL, Grail. <clears throat> Holy Grail, all those are unreal. And then getting into Eddie Murphy trading places and those kind of things. All those old movies that were just funny, Caddyshack, all Bill Murray, and then uh, into Ghostbusters. All the things, just all my guys I liked, I'd follow them to whatever movie they were in. Cracked me up, made me laugh. Steve Martin albums. Steve Martin, uh, huge he apparently takes his comedy very seriously. Of. Like, say Steve, again. Steve well, Martin Steve apparently Martin. takes his. I've never, I've met him once, but not in any meaningful way. Um, but takes his comedy very seriously. Like he's a master of, or he's sort of a, a student of the through. science yeah. of the comedy and the bit, like which I admire. He's has yeah. really loud. There's some that move. I mean, the jerk, obviously. The, 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 when he came out and deconstructed the idea of a comedian with this guy in the white suit, I'm a wild and crazy guy. I'm sure somehow it influenced me humbly saying that because he didn't really have jokes. He did two minutes on just his character asking for a blue spot. <laughs> yeah. Did I get a blue spot? And Genius. the commitment of it, you know, uh, that was sort of this brilliant new move. And then the Rob Williams was around. Richard Pryor was around. Obviously, yeah. George Carlin. Yeah. And then it kept going to Kennison and on and Kennison. on. But uh, I love comedians. <laughs> I do too. It's terrifying. I mean, Dave, you're so... I always, when I've seen you perform live or on tel on Netflix or whatever, it's like you have that that ease that's just so, I guess, dry. But it's also so fucking funny the way... It's this, there's a musicality to it, like where you sort of drop in these little, eh, and then, you know, mm, beep, mm, that, and then you sort of like go into sort of, a, <laughs> and I don't know how you do it. It's a, it's a magic trick to me. So it's, I don't really want to know how you do it, but I very much I appreciate it. it. We, we just found a little extra time. What's that? We just, just, we just, we just found a little extra time to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> now we have, no. no, David does have an incredible, like, throwaway casual like throw thing. Jokes. And little, Love and that. little phrases. And there's, I see Neelan in him and Dennis Miller, and, mm. and but he's his own own man. But he's, they, were, they were really He's uh, kind of pretty special. Yeah. I, I have to go out there and scream and dance around and make <laughs> two voices. <laughs> and David's so lo fi, and it's very cool. I, I admire that too, because I just like, Richard Pryor says, if you're bombing, just start pushing energy. I was doing it last <laughs> night. Throw it out there. I was having a slow patch, so I started talking a lot louder and moving a lot more. I go <laughs> so full John Bonet. You slow yeah. him down. There's not even any jokes in there. It's just all energy. No, <laughs> it's it's always... What's up? I'm people. Yeah, come on. You know, whatever. Yeah. Just energy. Because some, if their energy is going down and you reflect it, then the, the souffle just collapses. But you well, just they push used back. to say. Dana Don Rickles used to go look at Ed over there he's like I want a cookie and you go these aren't really jokes but if they're said in the form of a delivery and oh the, no uh, Rickles was the greatest because he just sounds like a joke, joke. Ed does no. another show start. Put him in the corner and give him a cookie. Yeah, <laughs> so you're on the show. yeah see, you now he's happy. <laughs> it's just all rhythm and you go I think that was a joke and Dennis Miller used to one time he said I sometimes will throw in a word even I don't know what it means I just make it up and just because it sounds like with the rhythm, that's the funny part. And everyone laughs. And then they go, I didn't even get that one. I don't even. But it just, you know, it sounds funny. All right, Justin, I'm going to go. So you guys stay on for another 10 minutes while I drive off. <laughs> We're going to talk about you, David. Yeah. Uh, you're thank you, fan. Justin. You're a good Justin, dude. Justin, so Thanks, great to meet you. And uh, I'd love to see you in New York. David and I will come out together. Yeah, please come when, when the uh, new... When they, when we'll the, it's, uh, the White House Plumbers, it's on White House Plumbers, Monday, May, Monday, May 1st, HBO. HBO, or on Max, or whatever. It is. Or HBO Max, Max, Woody Harrelson as Howard Hunt, and of course, Justin Thoreau as Lena G. Gordon Liddy, a very gentle, kind of boring character. <laughs> I mean, that, that must have been his, <laughs> he lit himself on fire, he ate a, he ate a rat. I mean, this guy is so, something, so that's, that's, that's going to be uh, awesome for you. So, anyway. Anybody got anything else? No, anything else? Miss them already. Greg, Annette, Heather S. <laughs> 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 Don't read who else is on the Zoom. Heather That's S. Not your the producers that are on the Zoom. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 